Let's hear it from Brendan Hike, who is the creator of JavaScript. He himself has claimed that he only had 10 days to create JavaScript and show a demo. What he did was he just copied as it is the Java Date API in 1995. So whatever was implemented in Java, the same thing he implemented in JavaScript. For JavaScript, we were really quick in copying it, but for deprecation, we didn't really copy them. And for the past 20 years, we have been stuck with what Java had deprecated around maybe 20 years back. Hi everyone, this is Anto Christopher. I work as a language engineer here at DeepSource. And today I'm going to give a talk on date and time handling in JavaScript. Uh, so the way you handle date and time in your application, in your code base, becomes very, very critical based on the domain in which you're working. So for example, if you're developing an application that allows users to book a ticket, maybe a flight ticket or a train ticket, in such cases, date and time play a very crucial role and you don't want to get these things wrong. Uh, there is a lot of potential uh, mistakes that you can do when working with date and time handling in JavaScript. It has always been a headache since the language was created. And I'm not the only one who is saying this. I have some data to prove this. So this is a graph from JavaScript, uh, State of JavaScript Survey in 2020. So when it was asked, what do you feel is currently missing from JavaScript? One of the top 15 replies was date and time handling. And if you jump to 2021, the same question was asked again, and from top 15, the response of better date management actually went to top three. And in the same survey, when people asked, when it was asked that what is, what are some of the pain points you uh, face when working with JavaScript? Again, in one of the top five replies was date management again. And in 2022, the things don't seem to be getting better. For the first question, it's still at top three, and in 20, uh, for the second question, it actually climbed one spot above and date management is a top four most pain point in JavaScript. So you might have this question, like why was this implemented in such a way that it's so developer, I mean, not so developer friendly. Um, let's hear it from Brendan Hike, who is the creator of JavaScript. So in many of the occurrences, he himself has claimed that he only had 10 days uh, to create JavaScript and show a demo. And one of the main requirements that his management asked him to do was uh, to make it look like more like Java. So with the time constraint, uh, the time available, what he did was he just copied as it is the Java date API in 1995. So whatever was implemented in Java, the same thing he implemented in JavaScript. But one thing was the Java date API in itself had a lot of problems. It was so bad that it was introduced in Java 1.2, but in the next immediate version, a lot of methods and constructors in the Java date API were deprecated. Uh, for JavaScript, we were really quick in copying it, but for deprecation, we didn't really copy them. And for the past 20 years, we have been stuck with what Java had deprecated around maybe 20 years back. So some of the problems that the Java date API had, for example, the date objects created were mutable. So after a date was created, you can actually mutate it and change its behavior or change its data. Uh, and it led to a lot of problems. Also, the numbering systems for months and years were a lot con confusing. Also, the method names are confusing and missing validation. Like there are a lot of arguments that uh, certain methods accepted that need to be validated, but they were not validated. And at the end, one final thing is the Java date API, though it is called date, it is not a date at all. It actually represents an instance in time. So the things that I have listed here actually apply for JavaScript as well. Let's uh, see one by one. So the JavaScript date API. Uh, very much like Java, it represents an instant in time. So for calculating an instance in time, we need a baseline. And here the baseline is the epoch time that is 1st January 1970. So internally, whatever method you use in the JavaScript date API currently, internally represent as the number of milliseconds that have elapsed since 1st Jan 1970. Uh, you can like verify this behavior like by using some methods available. So in ES6, you can use date.now. And you can see this uh, number being printed here. This is nothing but the number of milliseconds since 1st Jan 1970. There are some older methods like get time and value of that do the same thing. The date constructor has a lot of overloads available. So one of them is like you can pass a integer value. This integer value represents the number of milliseconds that needs to be added or subtracted to the epoch time. So when I'm passing zero as the uh, argument of the date constructor, 
it actually represents Jan 1, 1970, which is nothing but the actual Unix epoch time. And when I pass a number like, say, 864 lakh, so this is nothing but the number of milliseconds in a particular day. So when I'm passing this, it actually adds one day to the epoch time, Jan 1st, so it will be Jan 2nd now. And when you pass the same number as in a negative form, it actually subtracts that uh, one day from the epoch time. So now it is December 31, 1969. So this is on the proof that, I mean, not a proof, but a way to show that internally, JavaScript represents time as an instance and not actually date and time. Also, if you might notice here, like when I'm printing out the results here, it's actually taking the time zone of my system. It actually shows Indian standard time. So that's one more thing. The JavaScript date API currently by default works with UTC. Some methods work with UTC and some methods work with your current system time zone. There are ways to work with other time zones, but they are not very developer friendly. For example, the to locate string function that actually accepts time zone as a parameter. Uh, the one thing that I really don't like about it is it uh, re returns the result in a string format. Now, uh, you, it's very difficult to perform some computations like adding a date or subtracting a date or finding the difference between two days when it's in a string format. You actually have to parse it to a date object and then do all the computations again. So this again, not so driver friendly fe uh, like feature. Uh, the date constructor also accepts a string in which you can pass a valid date format. So here, if you see, I'm passing only the date. That is first, uh, like, the date here. But the return result also includes the time, which is by default showing the midnight of that particular day. So what I want to say is, you cannot actually work with date alone in JavaScript. Internally, it is always date plus time, since it is an instance in time. Also, as we saw, the methods default to either your local time or your uh, or the UTC time. And there are other things that were in Java still carried forward and are being problematic or confusing number for months and years, and also like validation for date and uh, date boundaries, I would say. Uh, to show that, let's see this example. So here, this is another constructor for the date uh, class. So the first argument here is the year. The second argument is the month. And the third argument is the date. Uh, day. So here. Uh, what I'm intending to print is, I want to print the first month of 2023 and date 23rd. But what it actually prints is Feb 23, which is actually the second month. So here what's happening is, the JS date API actually starts counting month starting from zero. So Jan is not the first month, Jan is the zeroth month in the year. So this for newbies or even for someone who is experienced with JavaScript might be a little problematic, might be a little confusing as well. Uh, some more confusion here. So uh, in the same date uh, overload, I am passing zero as the year here. But if you see, it's not actually returning the zero with year. It's returning 1900 as the year. And when I'm passing 99, it actually uh, returns 1999. So the thing here is whenever you pass any uh, digit that is equal to one or two digits, it actually adds to the base year 1900. Again, it comes from Java. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, so any number that is greater than two digits, if you uh, pass to the constructor, it will actually work properly. So here, if I'm passing 100, it is printing 100th year. But when I'm passing 0 and 99, it prints 1900 and 1999. This is another source of confusion. The next thing is boundary validation. So here, what I'm uh, now we know that this is year, month, and date. So here, the first sorry, the first month is Feb, uh, Feb actually. So I'm trying to print 30th Feb. But what I'm getting is March 2nd. So what has happened here is it did not validate that February doesn't have 30 or 31st as a, day, as a date. It actually did not throw an error and it overflowed to the next month and added two to that uh, month. So I'm uh, returned a value of March 2nd. Uh, a similar example here. If you want to print 32nd of, a, of December, it will actually overflow to the next year and print Jan 1st. So there is no proper validation if you don't have proper tests in your application to catch such scenarios, it is very much possible that your application might be broken if some uh, incorrect data is passed. Uh, another source of difficulty, I would say, is our date computations. So when, if you want to add a particular day or subtract or count the difference between days, it is not very straightforward with the current date implementation. So here I'm trying to find out the difference between two days. So here I'm declaring the first date using the date construct date class. Uh, a second date, then I am using the absolute method to get the difference of it. But the thing here is when you do a difference between two dates, it won't actually directly return you the 
difference in date, but it will return the difference in milliseconds between both the dates. So to uh, convert that into number of days, I have to divide it by the number of milliseconds in one given day. So that calculation I have done here. So at the end, I have to do uh, diff time divided by one day, which will give me 10 days. So just to find the difference between two days, I have to do so many things. And this is just like one example that I've given. There are many more such examples available. Another problematic thing is the parser behavior in the current date implementation. So if you want to interchange between different date formats, uh, the ECMAScript standard is uh, for uh, string interchange for date time is based on the ISO 8601 format. So what it states it, uh, like we'll have the year first, then the month, the date, then we we'll add a T to separate between the date and the time, then we'll have the hour, minute, seconds, milliseconds, and Z as the offset. So if you only want to work with uh, date only forms, like I'm not telling that JavaScript allows you to internally represent a uh, date as a date only, but if you want to explicitly write a method that returns only date, or if you want to, in a string format, if you want to represent a date, you can uh, use all these formats. And on top of it, if you want to add time to date as well, then you can append uh, this particular format to the above format. So these are the uh, like standard formats that we can use to represent date in a string format. But there's a catch here as well. There are some uh, differences in what ISO, uh, uh, the 8601 extended format says and what ECMAScript standard says. So here in the date constructor again, I am passing a single date here without any time and it defaults to the midnight of that particular day. Uh, this is fine with me, it's okay. But in the second uh, example, what I'm doing is uh, for the same date, I'm passing 1.30 as the time. Now what it is uh, doing is, it is actually considering this past date as my own time zone. And in the result you can see, it actually deducted 5 or 30 minutes, that is the offset for IHT time. And it went back to one, went one day back to 22nd Feb to 8 o'clock. So this again, another inconsistency where it uh, confuses between what to use, whether UTC or your own uh, like standard, I mean the local time zone. Another great source of, uh, I would say, a source of bugs in your application might arise because uh, very much like Java, in JavaScript as well, the date object is mutable. So once you have created a date object, you can use some setter methods and actually change the date of, uh, sorry, change the value of the date after it has been created. So, I mean, just a small example here. So I'm creating a date, so it uh, returns the current date here. I'm setting the year as 2024. It sets the year to 2024, looks very simple. Uh, and doesn't look very problematic, but in certain cases, it is very easy to miss uh, certain situations and it might lead to bugs. For example, here is one scenario. So here I want to write an application, say, or write a code that adds one day to any given date. So how I will approach with the current date, uh, current date API is, I'll create today's date, so it is 23rd, that's fine. I have add one day function in which I'll pass today's date, and here I'll use the get date uh, method to get the current date from the entire date object. I'll add one to it, and then I'll set it back to date, and I'll return it. So one day later here, if you say, uh, if you see, we'll have the updated date. So earlier the date was 23rd. After this function has been invoked, the one day later uh, variable has the date as 24, which is uh, fine. But if you see, if you do a equality comparison between today and one day later, you will see that both are equal now. Because since it is a mutable object, when you pass today as an argument here, and you call set date on it, along with one day later, which got set from the return date, also the original source of the date got changed. So today and one day later both changed to the same value now, which is incorrect. Okay, uh, these are some of the problems that the current date API has, and there are like lot more that uh, I can't cover in this entire talk. Uh, but there is some good things happening uh, in the JavaScript community as well. So there has been a proposal in work for a long time, for many years, called the Temporal API. So Temporal API is going to be a global object and it is going to be the modern way of managing date and time in JavaScript. Uh, so it's in stage three proposal now. It's, it's got, I think it got one more stage left to clear and go to the standard. So it's not yet ready for production use, but it does have a lot of hope in fixing what the current date API did wrong. So one uh, very positive thing about temporal API is they have bifurcated the APIs properly. And as per a use case, they have specialized APIs. So if you want to uh, build an application that is only concerned with an instance of a time, you are not concerned about time zone and anything, they have, they have a set of APIs for that. 
if you're only concerned with, like if your application is concerned with managing time zones, they have a set of APIs for that. And if you don't care about time zones at all, they have another set of APIs for that. And their nomenclature as well is very clear. So if any method has a name plane in it, it means that the object that is written by this method doesn't have an associated time zone. So if your application is not concerned with time zone, these set of APIs are the best thing that you can use uh, to avoid any complexity. And if any method has the zoned name in it, uh, the object that is written by this method will have associated time zone information as well. So if your application wants to work with time zone, if you want to interchange between time zones, convert between time zones, then you should be using the zoned API, uh, zoned API methods. So here I've got some, just got some examples here. So if you just want to get the instance of a time uh, as per the Unix epoch, so you can do a temporal.now.instant. And uh, here you have a lot of options, uh, much more than what the current data API provides. You can return the seconds, you can return the milliseconds, you can go even step further and return microseconds and also nanoseconds. And if you want to uh, use the plain, uh, plain APIs, like if you're not concerned with time zones much, then here as well, you have got multiple options. So the date API, as I said, doesn't work only with date. It's a combination of date and time. But the temporal API allows you to work with only date or only time or a combination of both. So if you're only concerned with date, you can use the plain date methods that will return you only the date. The plain time method will only return you the time. And if you want both, you can use the date time method. And coming to the zone methods, so here if you can see, uh, I'm. So uh, for time zone information, I believe like there is there are no other uh, like options available. You only have date time available because if you want to uh, convert between time zones, you need both date and time to be very accurate. So that's why uh, when we return it, it will uh, give you the date time as well the current time zone in which this was executed. So this information can be further used. So here I'm doing a two string if you see in all of these examples because the return um, value is not actually a string; it's an actual object which has a lot of methods like add, subtract, and other things, or, or time zone conversion methods, which you can actually use. Just to display it here, I'm using the two-string method. And one important thing that the temporal API fixes is the numbering of months. So here, when I say second month of 2023, it's still the second month of 2023, and not the first month. The same with years as well. When I say I want to uh, print out the zeroth year, it's actually the zeroth year and not 1900. And boundary validations have also been fixed in temporal API. So here, the month is second month, which is February, which is actually correct. And I'm trying to print 30th of February, which doesn't exist. So the JavaScript current date API will actually overflow and go to the next month. But here, the temporal API will actually throw a range error saying that 30 doesn't exist between 1 and 28. That's the date range for February. Uh, same example like work with for like leap years as well. If in 2024, if you want to print 30th of February, it will actually say that Feb only has days from 1 to 29. So 30 is not a valid number. So you don't have to write additional tests to catch this scenario. So your application will throw an error itself. And date computations has well been made very easy. So if you want to add dates, you have a function called date.add. So you just have to pass an object like what you want to add. So here, uh, 23rd of March, I am adding one year and four months. So it will actually um, add that and uh, return the date, the proper date. Uh, a similar example here. So here I have uh, 31st of, sorry, yeah, 31st of Jan, and I'm trying to add one month here. But if you see the written output, it smartly did not say that after adding one month, it is 31st February. It actually stopped at 28th February. So it's taking care of a lot of things here. But if you don't want this implicit uh, capping to happen, and if you want the application to inform you that you are doing an invalid, uh, you're doing an operation that is going to lead in an invalid date, then you can actually pass another parameter or another object which says overflow reject. So in this case, if you add, try to add uh, one month to 31st January, it will say that 31st Feb is not existing because it doesn't, like it doesn't fall between one and 28. So this thing is also taken care of. The parser behavior is also standard and consistent. Uh, here I'm trying to print out 28th of February and I'm not passing any time. And it actually defaults to the uh, midnight of that date, which is correct. And here I'm passing 1.30 as my time and it's still 1.30, it did not did it 5.30 hours and go to the UTC time. And now in temporal API, the methods return and keep, uh, 
immutable object. So here I am instantiating a date, 28 Feb, and I'm subtracting one month from it. Even after I perform this operation, the original date is still 28 Feb, only the new date has changed to 28 Jan. So the objects here are uh, immutable, which saves you a lot of time while debugging because a lot of bugs might arise when things are mutable. So as I said, uh, the temporal API is still in stage three, it's not ready for production use. Uh, but there are polyfills available. One most popular one is the JS temporal slash polyfill. You can actually uh, like install it and uh, try out the temporal API. Or if you don't want to do this, an easier way is to go to this uh, TC39 proposal page, which is the ECMA script proposal page. Uh, there, if you open the dev tools, it will actually load the entire temporal API script in your dev tools. So you can actually start using these methods in your browser uh, without doing anything. And if you find any bugs, you can report it to the in the GitHub issue page. Uh, yeah, that's it from my end. Does anyone have any questions? If not, yeah, all good then. Thanks.